the enterprise has its own life cycle that begins from the cradle of venture nurturance and ends either in intensive care or untimely death. As the enterprise runs its life course, it is governed by life forces, starting from the entrepreneur and proceeds to the enterprise operations, organization, its product, and its relevant environment or world. Let us go through the six stages in the enterprise life cycle. Let's begin from stage one, environmental scanning and opportunity assessment. The objective of environmental scanning is to clearly determine the opportunities and highlight the risks or threats for establishing an enterprise. Environmental scanning requires a historical, current, and prospective examination of a given industry within a specified market area. In this scanning, the analyst evaluates the potential and actual demand and supply of the products or services generated by the enterprise. Opportunities for market penetration or exploitation are then derived from this actual demand supply analysis. In opportunity seeking, it is very important to identify the main threats and obstacles to actualizing perceived opportunities. Environmental scanning pinpoints the critical success or failure factors in the production, marketing, and financing of the enterprise products or services. This is to determine the push and pull factors that govern the viability and sustainability of the enterprise. In the final analysis, the objective of environmental scanning is to clearly determine opportunities and highlight the risks for establishing an enterprise. Let us now go to stage two, the evaluation of alternatives. In exploiting a particular opportunity, it is necessary to evaluate various alternatives for taking advantage of that opportunity. There may be various technology options, production processes, market segments, industry entry points, and organizational modalities open. The alternative options must be subjected to feasibility assessments. In the feasibility assessment, the useful aspects to be considered should include, one, the presence of a good market, two, the production capacity of the enterprise and the appropriate technology and the operational processes to be used. Three, the amount of financing needed and the possible sources of financing. Four, the organization and legal structures to be adopted, linkages and networks formed, and technical assistance required. Five, the expected rates of returns, cash flows, income break-even points, and ability to pay for loan amortizations, if any. Six, other factors such as the environment. The third stage of the enterprise life cycle is the implementation phase. In here, the organizers and owners of the enterprise put in their own equity financing. In case there's a shortfall, the owners and organizers raise debt financing to cover this shortfall. In the implementation phase, Rules and regulations are formulated to govern the management working relationships and job content of the enterprise. Officers are appointed and assignments are given out. The organizational structure and operating systems are put in place. 
In the implementation phase, there are the seven critical aspects of one, purchasing the right machinery and equipment. Two, designing the best plant or office layout. Three, determining proper workflows, cash and inventory levels, and credit policies. Four, devising pay plans, incentive schemes, performance criteria, and control mechanisms. Five, establishing sound management guidelines and scope of work, authorities, responsibilities, and accountabilities. Six, targeting the right markets, and seven, starting on the right operational footing. In some instances, a pilot project may be undertaken before full commercial operations are carried out. In others, there are pre-operating or sub-commercial test runs before going full blast. This is to iron out the kinks and to debug the system. Enterprise birth, if not aborted, leads to full commercial operations in the fourth stage of the enterprise life cycle. In this commercial stage, production goes into full gear. Raw materials are sourced, processed, and converted into finished goods, and then sold. The market for the enterprise products or services is exploited to the seven piece of the marketing mix, positioning, product offering, packaging, promotions, place, people, and pricing. Funds are mobilized and managed according to operational needs and working capital flows. The efficiency levels of the workforce eventually rise in consonance with their learning curve as more outputs are extracted from the inputs injected. The enterprise product or service gains greater market acceptance at this stage. Depending on the quality of the product, service, or management of the enterprise, and depending on industry and market trends, there are four possible scenarios in the fifth stage of the enterprise life cycle. These scenarios are expansion, integration, contraction, or consolidation. One possibility is the expansion of plant or service capacity to serve a bigger market because of accelerated demand or the easing out of less efficient competitors. Another possibility is the opportunity provided by integrating backward to control sources of supply or integrating forward to downstream processing or end consumer marketing. The rationale here is to increase the value added of the product or service and to control the vertical and horizontal links of the industry chain. The third possibility is the contraction of the enterprise operations because of increased competition or enterprise diseconomies. The fourth possibility is enterprise consolidation to remove excess fat streamline operations, and transform the firm into a leaner but meaner organization. Not all things come to a glorious end. Failures do happen. Even success begets its own inefficiencies, bureaucracies, and stagnation. There comes a point experienced sooner or later 
when the enterprise finds it necessary to reorient, rehabilitate, or reorganize itself at the sixth stage of the enterprise life cycle. This is done either by repositioning the products of the enterprise or redefining its market. During this stage, the enterprise embraces reorganization as the cure to its many shortcomings. In extreme cases, rehabilitation measures are taken while external assistance and new capital are sought. If nothing works, the enterprise is given a decent burial. The sixth stage may therefore lead to a new life cycle for the enterprise or culminate in bankruptcy. Let us now tackle the five life forces. The enterprise sustains itself to the interplay of the entrepreneur, the enterprise operations, enterprise organization, the enterprise products and services, and the enterprise environment or world. The primordial life force of the enterprise is the entrepreneur. As life giver, the entrepreneur is driven by great passion to achieve and succeed. Aside from making the business prosper, the entrepreneur strives to uplift the lives of his or her customers and his or her people. The entrepreneur goes through the different stages of the enterprise life cycle with different roles and functions. At the environment scanning and opportunity assessment phase, he or she is imbued with the desire to attain personal and business objectives. Usually, informal research processes are used unless the entrepreneur is a management professional in which case more formal procedures are employed. At the evaluation stage, the entrepreneur lines up the criteria for opportunity assessment, taking into account his or her own biases, attitudes, and personal preferences before making the investment decision. The commercial stage is a testing point for the entrepreneur. Many are not really managers. They do not care for details. They're more of leaders and visionaries than organizational plodders. It may be advisable to transfer operational control to professional administrators as the enterprise activities become more complicated. Enterprise growth creates new challenges. The skill required of the entrepreneur is to manage change and complexity. Moreover, the tendency of the enterprise is to explore fields beyond its competence. At this point, there's need to rekindle the entrepreneurial talent for idea generation and visioning. The second life force emanates from enterprise operations as money, markets, machines, materials, and methods are combined. The resources deployed provide the physical life force of the enterprise. As such, enterprise operations may be termed as the regenerative life force or the reproductive system of the enterprise. Let us go through the different stages of the enterprise operations. 
At the environmental scanning stage, the enterprise sets formal goals and objectives and becomes more methodical in developing opportunities. Enterprise operators assess the organization's comparative advantage in the marketplace, focusing on the most promising prospects, analyzing its strengths and weaknesses, evaluating the risks and the threats, and calculating how much resources it needs to exploit opportunities. Evaluation of alternatives is done in rigorous strategic planning exercises, which craft the overall enterprise strategies, but cascade them into marketing, production, people, and financial strategies based on existing and potential capabilities. Investment criteria are used. The next stage, the enterprise operators translate the strategies into market entry and operating plans. Resources are allocated. The organizational modality to implement the strategies and plans is set up. At the commercial operation stage, there is clearer market positioning. Resources are optimized as the enterprise goes through all its operating processes. The enterprise operators evaluate their overall organizational effectiveness and establish control measures to influence the behavior of all managers. During the growth or contraction stage, the regenerative life force develops alternative growth or contraction strategies, eyeing mergers, acquisitions, disinvestments, and disposals. Resources are reallocated. Finally, at the last stage, the enterprise scraps survival strategies, recharts and repositions its course, and finds ways to be reborn or to die. While money, markets, machines, methods, materials, and other facilities beget profits and benefits, the propeller of enterprise growth is the organization or the inner life force. This brings in the additional M of management and of manpower. People managing and supervising the enterprise provide the inner engine of growth. Good leadership, sound management, worker commitment, and people performance make or break the enterprise. Selflessness and accountability from those with authority and responsibility ensure the integrity of the firm. Belief in a common cause and the willingness to instill discipline assure the performance of the enterprise. If these traits are present, the organization itself becomes intrapreneurial. Managers and workers innovate as in-house corporate entrepreneurs to bring the enterprise to higher, more complex levels of investments. They devise structures and mechanisms for institutionalizing continuous environmental scanning and opportunity seeking. At the environmental scanning stage, the organization or inner life force is intrapreneurial. It invests substantially in research and development and mobilizes creative individuals into cross-functional or tiger teams. These teams are given the resources to innovate. A conducive climate to express their creativity is nurtured. Intrapreneurial projects succeed or fail on the basis of people who are the major determinants of viability due to their expertise, experience, and exposure. Managers and workers alike 
become joint project evaluators in entrepreneurial organizations. More formal screening teams composed of senior managers, functional and cross-functional groups evaluate project alternatives. At the implementation stage, people again take center stage. The right recruits must be hired. The implementing team must be trained and developed. The learning curves must be shortened through effective learning processes, constant critiquing, and continuous education. At the commercial stage, organizational capabilities must be enhanced towards meeting organizational goals. Managing by objectives and by results should be the mantra. Organizational effectiveness must be continually increased through intensive and extensive people development programs. At the expansion or contraction stage, there's a need to gear people for change, retooling and upgrading them, realigning or reallocating them. Finally, at the last stage, the inner life force must be able to manage crisis and adversity. If need be, people should be recycled in or out of the organization. Retrenchment and downsizing are necessary evils at this stage. The idea is to make people reinvent themselves in order to revive the organization. The enterprise either processes a product or renders a service. This product or service is the visible manifestation of its work, the essence of the enterprise. If the enterprise were able to sustain and make viable the production of this product or rendering of this service, then the product or the service becomes the visible life force. At the environmental scanning and opportunity assessment stage, the focus of all efforts is to explore the market and determine the needs of target clients. Many product forms and concepts may be entertained to meet those needs. These ideas are screened. Those that survive the screening are put to the evaluation phase where product tests market surveys, and business analysis are done. When the choice is made, the business is implemented through the actual design of the product, field trials, and product launching. As the product or service gains acceptance, it enters commercial operations. It may be differentiated into various forms, sizes, packages, market niches, etc. It undergoes further productivity enhancement as the pencil is sharpened to determine cost, volume, profit contribution and the right product or service mix. The visible life force may be challenged at the fifth stage of expansion, integration, contraction, and consolidation. Careful product life cycle analysis is necessary at this point to determine competitive positioning and to introduce market responsive improvements. The analysis may either lead to product redesign or product phase out. In either case, one must calculate what is the least painful route or compute the highest terminal values for the enterprise shareholders. The enterprise source of external energy is its relevant world. This is the same as saying that its relevant market, industry, government, technological field, environmental condition, and other factors and external variables influence the fate of the enterprise. The relevant world is the outer life force. 
because it is the external sustainer or destroyer of the enterprise. The enterprise survives and expands if it's able to attune itself to environmental changes influencing its action. It can prosper if it's able to match the power forces outside the enterprise. It can endure if the enterprise minimizes the power plays within itself. If not, then the enterprise weakens. This shifts organizational energies towards seeking external support systems. It then tries to conserve whatever bargaining power or leverage it has retained vis-a-vis -vis the environment. At the environmental scanning stage, the relevant world manifests itself through the changes in industry trends, cycles, and dynamics. Critical variables for success or failures change, yielding new opportunities and threats. The macroenvironmental factors of political, social, economic, ecological, and technological change might turn the business situation upside down. There's a need to watch changes in government policies, demographic profiles, supply and demand trends, inventions and innovations in the marketplace. There's a need to revisit consumer preferences and their effects on the market or micro-market potentials. The relevant world imposes its own criteria in the evaluation stage. After all, the relevant world sees the bigger picture and can compare one enterprise to another. It can even aggregate information to determine and calibrate industry standards. Evaluation in the context of the relevant world assesses the resources available, the threats and risks in the environment, and the power forces that shape the direction of the playing field. At the implementation stage, it's important to be sensitive to the dynamics of a volatile market or industry. Such a sensitivity would allow the enterprise to make preemptive strikes or ride the tide if the conditions are favorable. Otherwise, the enterprise may just have to find a market niche that avoids the power forces fighting in the marketplace. The enterprise must be able to cope with various interest groups or stakeholders that are making claims on the same market or industry that the enterprise is in, must overcome formidable entry buyers appearing at the implementation stage. At the commercial operation stage, the enterprise must exploit the prevailing environmental climate while minimizing the adverse consequences of environmental changes and its own operations buildup. Finally, at the expansion and contraction stage, the enterprise must be highly attuned to changes in the environment while managing the power plays both outside and inside the enterprise. In this lecture, we've gone through the six stages of the enterprise life cycle. They include environment scanning, evaluation of alternatives, implementation, commercial operations, and expansion, integration, contraction, and consolidation. The last stage is reorientation, reorganization, and rehabilitation. We've also gone through the five enterprise life forces. They include the entrepreneur or the primordial life force, enterprise operations, the organization or the inner life force, the product or the visible life force, and finally, the relevant world or the outer life force.